right. Let's do these raw ratings. The, the Thunderdome. Ratings, the raw ratings were great. They were fantastic by today's standards. By the standards of the last three months, they were fantastic. The 18 to 49 number was up 39.7% from last week. Granted, last week was the fourth lowest in history, but still, any kind of growth like that, you know, you know, obviously it's Thunderdome and um, day after uh, SummerSlam, you know, are the two reasons, but that's just, you know, I mean, you know, it'll be interesting to see if, if, uh, you know, I don't expect the numbers to stay at this level. Um, as, as we go on, I, I think that some of it's novelty of the Thunderdome, but if they stay close to this level, you know, it basically says that all that stuff we've been saying about, uh, the booking, while true, wasn't the main culprit. You know, it was the setting that was the main culprit. If the numbers go back to where they were before, then it was the booking that was the main culprit, and the setting was a Band-Aid, like many Band-Aids, like, you know, bringing back old guys' Band-Aids, which, which we've had a lot of, that have, that have worked for like a week or two, and then you go right back to where you were, or, or actually get worse, or bringing in a bunch of mask guys or whatever. So, um, you know, time will tell what this means in the long, long run, but they got a shockingly big number uh this week i mean the smackdown number i was not it was not unexpected at all because it was the first one but the raw one well i knew it would be up it was up a lot you know like the smackdown increase was about what i figured 13 percent. this was uh 23 percent viewers and and um it was most of the increase was males 35 to 49 I mean, that was the big, it was, it was heavy male skew and it was 35 to 49 was because we really 18 to 34 didn't go up that much. A little bit went up, but, but it was 35 to 49 that was up 49%, which is just, you know, a, you know, especially since that's your number one. Well, number two, number one's actually 50 plus, but the, uh, 35 to 49 actually beat 50 plus this week, which, um, almost never happens. Hasn't happened, you know, in, in a long, long time. So it, the AW number was, interesting uh for you know that actual number itself is about what they were doing on wednesday but the makeup of the audience was very different um it was closer to the nba audience than it was to the AEW audience um the d it was heavy heavy male it was younger skewing in fact the uh aw show this week of all sports on television AEW had the most viewers per home of any sports event on television, which actually it's it's had for the last couple of weeks. But it also it was not the youngest skewing. It was the youngest skewing except for the NBA. The NBA still, did, but but it was even younger skewing than soccer. So it's the second youngest skewing sports uh, sport on television this week, or if, if you consider it sport. But um, it was you know similar. It was younger skewing than usual because. It was a lot of NBA audience that checked it out. Um, the women audience that, that has been very strong for AEW, um, especially 35 to 49 women was way down. 18 to 34 women was down, but it was down like 8%. But the, um, 18 to 34 guys in particular was way, way up, um, for this, for this thing. Um, and teenagers, teenage guys were way up as well. So it was, a unique and younger audience and um you know what that means in the long run who knows but um very very heavily male skew audience it was like you know especially when when it's been so close to um when the women audience has been what's grown in AEW so much of late and this show did not have that at all so um it wasn't it was some people um you know you know a lot of a lot of AEW fans that that followed of course it was a lot of, it was probably a lot of new fans. And also, um, you know, the number it, itself at the end was hurt because the last 30 minutes, a lot of people who DVR'd the show. So, so here's how the ratings work. So, Cause it, it's the numbers that we get at first, the first numbers that is viewers that have watched as of midnight that night. So it's not only live viewing, it's live viewing plus DVR viewing up through midnight. And then later we'll get the numbers of you know, plus threes or plus sevens. I haven't even really, I rarely even see plus threes, but I do see the plus sevens. Um, another thing which we haven't talked about also in the, in the plus sevens is in, you know, the, the plus sevens, um, 
AEW was really, really big before the pandemic. And then when the pandemic came, the DVR viewership of AEW dropped and NXT as well. And now they're both back to normal. In fact, NXT's DVR viewership is, um, I don't say higher, um, by percentage it's higher, but that's because the, the, the HN49 number is so much lower. So it's really about the same. And the AEW is, is pretty much just slightly below normal. Like it used to be 41%. Now it's 39%, you know, addition, um, you know, from the first number that we see. So it's very, so, so that has started to come back. So, you know, as far as why, you know, who knows? I mean, there's a million different reasons. I guess people are feeling more normal or something, or maybe people just didn't, uh, you know, they, you know, when the, when the pandemic started, I know that we used to talk to a lot of the guys and, and it was, they were frustrated because they felt that everybody saw it as like, like preseason football or preseason basketball, or preseason baseball. You know, it's like, it's on, it's there, but it doesn't count because there's no fans. And now I think people have probably in some ways started to accept that this is just what it is. It's not preseason anymore and it does count. And so there's, uh, there is coming back, you know, I mean, you know, and maybe that's helped Raw and SmackDown, but probably, probably it's more the, you know, the, um, the Thunderdome thing. So, you know, we'll see if, if the one thing with the Thunderdome is if it stays up, it tells everyone that the, the key to this thing is special effects and, and setting and not so much talent and wrestling and booking. Um, and if that's the case, we'll, well, it's that. one day right now. Let's give it a little time. Well, it's too, but, but no, it is too early. It's too early. I'm just saying that, like, you know, what we'll learn if this, if it stays up, then we'll learn one thing. If it, and if it goes back down, like, you know, then we'll learn it's, you know, there's a lot of things that are going to work for a week or two. And that's really irrelevant because this is, as, as Triple H likes to say, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And if you can do a hot shot thing and get a number up for a week or two in the long run, that doesn't mean a damn thing. Um, so we don't know yet what all of this means. Uh, but, um, yeah, AEW. Actually, I thought AEW um, tomorrow coming off of a big NBA lead-in and not being on, not at 6 o'clock, being in prime time. I actually thought that they were going to get their biggest rating in a long, long time. Now, not so much. Um, now it's an unfamiliar time without the big lead-in. Um, so it probably... It should do much less than usual, but you know we'll see. And and no matter what it does, it does again. There's not a AEW rating that matters really until I would say October the 14th. That's when it matters again. Right now, like uh, you know, Tony Khan and I even talked about this. It was like it was like, does anybody remember the ratings of Nitro when it was preempted for the NBA? It's like no, we didn't even care about them. The weeks that they happened, we knew that the the number didn't count. So that's really where we're at. We're at a situation where the number really doesn't count right now. But, but you can learn from it. You know, you can learn how to tweak the announcing for for a new audience, which is actually something that you know, whatever. So it was that it was suggested to be by Mike Tanay, and it was actually a really really great idea that that you know, hopefully, the next time if they do have a lead in that that they could do that, and and the same with uh, if well WWE doesn't have an doesn't have that situation so it's not really relevant to them right now um but there you know and then just the ability to get some of these people that sample it i mean that's the key right now is not so much the number but the people who sample it for the first time do something exciting enough or whatever that makes them want to come back so anyway where i started with the dvr thing is because the last 30 minutes of uh dynamite on Saturday, if people DVR'd the show, like like your season ticket DVR thing, like I would have, you would miss the last 30 minutes. So the rating for the last 30 minutes of the show is going to be slightly lower than it would have been, um, you know, with if it had started on time. And also starting late, probably. Um, I don't really know that it hurt that bad starting late um, because you... Um, you know, if you started on time, yeah, there are going to be some wrestling fans who are just like, I'm don't watch this NBA, you know, and, but I think most of them probably stuck through it. And the fact is, is you're still coming after an NBA game that, that gave you a much better lead in. 
I mean, their first quarter did over a million viewers, which they never do. Um, I mean, they didn't keep them for the whole show, but that you know, when you have that kind of a thing, it's like uh, you know, the same thing happened with UFC. I mean, UFC was the same night, and their highest rated quarter was um, the first match, not the main event, which almost never happens in UFC for the exact same reason because it was the first match coming after a highly rated NBA game.